If you're looking for clear pro-life thinking, cutting-edge apologetics, and a fresh approach to abortion dialogue, you've come to the right place. This is the Equip for Life podcast. I am here with Gary Freeman, the Fatherhood and Family Program Manager at Karenet. We have been talking about having you on for quite some time. Oh, it is finally good to have you in the studio, so my friend. So good to be Welcome. here. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Okay. Tell yeah. everyone a bit about you um, and Ooh. how you got into pro-life work uh, so we can get into the conversation. Yeah. Who? So, let's see. Originally from Chesapeake, Virginia. We got to start there. Okay. I love repping my 757. Talk about it. Todd Water, you know, <laughs> Mike Vick, Ronald Curry, Allen Iverson that might rub people the wrong way or the right way. Why Who would knows? Michael Vick rub people the wrong way? I, I, I don't, don't know, know what you're talking about. <laughs> he, I have no clue. He's, he's the man. <laughs> he turned things around eventually, right? <laughs> exactly. We're good. We're good. All right. So... Um, but but the reason for that, because I was blessed to come out because I play football and this was a time that they made the area really hot. So praise the Lord, I was able to get a football scholarship to a college. Nice. So there you go. Nice. East Carolina in, in Greenville, North Carolina. So you play um, football. What, yeah. what position, just in case some listener is interested so, in that kind of thing? I don't, I don't understand the football positions. I don't, do, I don't so know anything. I played center. Um, all Center. right, on the offensive line. So, so what's that mean? I would say the most important person on the field. No, I'm not saying. But um, <laughs> well, there's the quarterback. <laughs> Whatever. What's you the know. center do for someone yeah. like me that has watched maybe one or two Super Bowls in, his, in so his life? So the center gets the ball to the quarterback. Okay. So we'll start there. Okay. But then there's other stuff that kind of goes into that. Okay. So I kind of have to snap the ball yeah. with one hand and then beat people up with the other one until I can get the other hand back. <laughs> <Okay>. after. <laughs> So it's kind of like, you know, that that can be a little weird. Um, you know, bark out some calls, you know, for the other offensive linemen. So, you know, we turn protections and mm-hmm. all kind of fun jazz. Feel man. like but, a shield, kind of. Yeah. That's why I say the most important person on the field. That's you right. know, so right. court, What are they going to do without you? They're all getting tackled the whole hey, time, Hey, Mr. Right? QB, you know, if you want to go <laughs> do great things, you got to get the ball first. So, <laughs> See, like in my role as, a, as like a nonprofit CEO type, for me, that's like, our administrator is like, look, this is the person who really makes everything possible, who gets the real stuff done That's it. when I'm overwhelmed. So you got to respect those people on your team. It's not just about the person that you see yes. Uh, yes. Up, up front. It's about the pe- the good team behind that person. Exactly, so you, so you were that person. I was that person. So right. it was, but so I thank God for that opportunity. And so my senior year is when our say I had what I call my Saul to Paul moment. Um, Mm. So, boom, getting blown up, kind of, you know, and having this encounter with Christ. And Mm. went to a service on a Wednesday night and put my faith in Jesus Christ. Said, I want to be a disciple. I want to walk with you, Lord. Wow, that must have been some service. Oh, gosh, it was crazy. It was like the church was huge, but it felt like I was the only one in the room that the the pastor was talking to. It was Mm. like one of those moments, Mm. but it's like I'm, I'm super grateful just... Because I feel like God loves me that much, hmm. you know? So anyway, I'm not going to go there that far. But yeah, so um, still try to play a little football after that. Played arena ball, all that kind of stuff. But really, I should have been done hmm. after college, to be honest. Um, but uh, went and did that for a little while, arena football. Then moved back to the Raleigh, North Carolina area. Mm-hmm. Um, got married. Been married for 12 years. Nice. Two beautiful daughters, mm-hmm. uh, 10 and 3. and a house full of ladies, yeah. fun times. Yeah. Um, and I worked in mental health for a little while. Um, so, yeah, so a, a lot of unicorns and pink frilly things. It was real but, natural for you to go from that to pregnancy, pregnancy center work, right? <laughs> Perfect, man. You know, like the Lord knows how to groom you for all that you do. I, that's what I, I don't know. Amen. Um, but yeah, so ended up uh, working in mental health for a little while. So okay. I worked at a couple of residential facilities for young men. Okay. So my natural inclination has always been working with at-risk youth, at-risk population, at-risk families. That's always just been. Where do you think that came from, that inclination where like you yeah. want it? Was that like from when you were doing football and people you were hanging yeah. out then? Or what was that? Man, well, I, I think that kind of goes into another part of kind of how I grew up. Okay. Because I'm a P, PK, you know, that was a yep. pastor. Pastor's but kid. we had a horrible relationship. Yeah. It was not good. That's I, really common yeah, for yeah, PK. It's really weird. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. And I hate it. Um, I, I am glad, though, the last two years, because my dad has been deceased for six years now. 
Hmm. Um, but the last two years of his life, we were able to like reconcile. Oh, that's so, so that was good. beautiful. So, so glad to hear that. I'm like, I'm able to like walk out a lot and just like memories and thoughts yeah. and things, you know, from those two years that were like beautiful. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, but growing up, those scars and those holes were still there. Yeah. They were like punctured into me and mm. they kind of manifested themselves in the first three or four years of my own marriage. Mm. Um, so thank God for therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Marriage Amen different. to therapy. So, we were just talking yeah. about that. Yes, Lord. Gosh. People, everyone Ooh. needs therapy. I yes. want I want therapy to be so destigmatized among exactly. especially Christians. Like I'm oh, su- surprised at how many Christians are like poo-poo to therapy. It's yeah. like yeah, I've been I've been in therapy for like oh, three years now, I think. Something uh, like that. Yeah. It's so, so good. Yeah. And I have yeah. so much more work to do, but Hey Amen. I'm in a lot better shape than it was three years ago. I'll tell so, you that. Exactly. So those are the praise God moments. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like, here we go. Yeah. You know, so that kind of actually geared me because there was mm. moments growing up in the home where I had a lot of friends who didn't know their dad. And I actually wish I was them. Oh, interesting. It was like, because my dad is like, I wish he wasn't here. You know, that's yeah. that's kind of the thought. So, and then where, where I grew up in Chesapeake, Virginia, it was kind of like, you know, I, I see a lot. Um it's not like soup. It's not like crazy bad, but at the same time, I just felt this inclination of, hmm. I want to be able to get young men, men in a way where it was like, there's a lot more to this life than what you think, what yeah. like meets the eye and all that. And a lot of that is in at risk families, hmm. you know, we can dive into that. That's crazy. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, that, uh, that's kind of like where my edge for that, I guess you could say come from. So you leave school, you want to help, at at risk men, yes, and so you start working in yep. in residence homes, uh, yeah, like uh, so group homes, um, residential facilities, like okay. actual like lockdown facilities, okay. stuff like that, stuff where I still get to use football technique, um, because you gotta <laughs> grab some guys sometimes, so <laughs> grab uh, them by the yeah, shirt, like you can't do that. Oh, you don't want to listen? Here we go. <laughs> I get to you know put hands on you, but so yeah, so did that, but not knowing like years into that, um. Literally at a, the church we were attending at the time, uh, had a service raising funds for a pregnancy center. And that was my first time hearing about like, what is a pregnancy center? Hmm. So my wife and I, we went back for that service and we got to hear from the executive director and it was just like, whoa, hmm. this is crazy. And something just sparked at that moment. And I didn't know what. Hmm. So I left you there. you knew you I knew wanted was, to do oh, something Something is with there. Them. Yeah. yeah, something was there. And I had no clue what. So I was like, man, okay, well, I just kind of be around. So, yeah, I was working in the youth ministry at that church. Mm-hmm. One of the young men that I was mentoring, his mother was a volunteer at the pregnancy center. This pregnancy center had just started a grant initiative through the National Father Initiative for having men work something out in the pregnancy center. Yeah. Um, so she said, hey, I think you'd be great for that. And I was like, okay. What if we'll give it a twirl. So I sent in resume, got a call from the executive director. We had a very uncomfortable two hour. Uh, <laughs> Why was it uncomfortable? Because she didn't really know what, what to, to interview do with me the football for. Player for. Like, what does this look like? This Especially, is such a new role for her. She wasn't yeah. even sure what she was looking for kind of a thing. Exactly. That's interesting. And then just men. Yeah. We're kind of getting it, like really not being. Men aren't usually in pregnancy centers. Yeah. Unless like, they're like the boyfriend, maybe with the girl. Exactly. But not like a volunteer or staff. Yeah. That's not really. Right. Anyway. So, yeah. So that's why it was uncomfortable because, like, what do I ask? Well, what do I say? I don't know. Right. But anyway, she hired me. So <laughs> there you go. So it was a part time position and God just tremendously blessed throughout that. And then. So, what were you doing? Before you move on, yeah. what, what, what were you doing in that part-time role at the Pregnancy Center? So, basically, the part-time role was to take these National Fatherhood Initiative uh, resources. And if when guys came in with uh, the young lady, mm-hmm. I would meet with them. Okay. And You're like much, in a different counseling room kind of a thing. Yes. yes yeah. We would separate them. And the guys would come with me. The girls would go with the, mm-hmm. the young lady volunteer. Right. And I would walk through the process of, hey, I know why you're here, but... Here's what, you know, we want to do to help support you, all that good stuff, right? Yeah. So literally banging my head up against the wall of like, <laughs> what the heck do I say to this dude? Like, Do you really? get training for that? I mean, I imagine it, there's not a lot that, that that applies for how they train them to talk to the women. 
I mean, yeah, there's probably so, not a lot of crossover. Yeah. So I went through the training, uh-huh. which I think is essential for guys. So you okay. just kind of know what you're jumping into. Like yeah. knowing, you know, like what are for, was it? Are you 486 and yeah. all these different types of things? Like knowing that is key. Yeah. Um, but how we say that as guys and right. it's like, well, what do you say to the apathetic guy that's kind of like, well, it's her, what is she, she wants right. to do it, you know, whatever. Right. It's like, but she's going to come to you. Right. So what does that look like? How, how, do, how do I, hmm. I started trying to develop the, what I would call the car ride home. Hmm. So they're going to leave. We're going to pump them full of great education and confidence. And yeah, but they're going to get in the car. Yeah. And by the time they get to the first stop, like, they're going to be like, all right, was that weird for you? Or, you know, yeah. like, what, what do you think of that? And I want to be able to help that guy think through that part. Uh, uh, you you want to optimize their car ride yes. home. Yes, not deflate it in terms of, yeah. man, that was weird. <laughs> so Interesting. Like, so, yeah, so that's... What were those, like, first few experiences like as you were trying to figure out <sighs> how to do this? Like, what, what are the wow. things where you're, like, in the process... Actually, before you enter that, just real quick. I mean, I think yeah. most of our listeners know what a pregnancy center is. Gotcha. But yeah. just for those that are, like have never really been in a pregnancy center, just do a quick like 101 on pregnancy centers. Yes, and we'll do this real quick. So, okay. <laughs> so a pregnancy center is basically a place where a young lady uh, who is dealing with the possibility of wanting to abort mm-hmm. can come and receive what we would, the care net, compassion, hope, and help and support and understanding all there is in this decision. Mm -hmm. So they know up up front at a pregnancy center, it's not an abortion clinic. You're not going to come and get an abortion. We make sure that that's known so that there's no, you know, deceiving going on and all that. But that place is a place where that compassion, hope, and help can be administered. So there's different processes of doing that. Um, There's nurses and people like that that are on staff that, are medically, you know, licensed, certified, all that kind of stuff and sonograms and all kinds of fun stuff, you know, yeah. but all that's offered at these pregnancy centers to be able to, you know, help support her and him, you know, think through this decision of abortion and what does that mean, you know, long term, yeah. long game for him. So pretty much that's what pregnancy centers are doing. There's a whole lot um, of them. They're awesome. Tons of them. You got, you know, CareNet. Yep. You know, it's like a national organization. There's about 1,100 affiliate pregnancy centers. Yep. And an affiliate basically who will say CareNet is the umbrella for them. Yeah. So we kind of resource all yep. those centers. So I get to have a lot of fun, lively conversations every week about how in the world do we serve men in huh. this pregnancy center? This is weird. Because now you're doing this at the national level. I yes. mean, I know we're kind of skipping. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when yeah. We'll, we're going to come back in a sec. But at, the, at this point, you're working at the national level to try to help a bunch of centers do yeah. what you were first doing at this one local center. Yes. yes this is yes. super cool. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. go back. Okay. So yeah. talk to me about those first few experiences with guys. We've kind of been mm. thrown into the deep end of the pool. Yeah. And, Good luck. And could not swim at all. Yeah. <laughs> so I, was, I've been there too. Oh, I, yes. So it was, man, it was the first couple of actual face to face. You're in this room with this guy. Yeah. And we actually labeled the guys abortion minded, abortion vulnerable or intends to carry. So Mm -hmm. the same categories that the girls got, the guys Mm -hmm. got. So my first couple of times was all abortion minded men where they were really like stringent, like, yeah, she got to get rid of it. Right. It's going to slow us down. And what was good that came out of that in terms of I'm hearing that because he wants to be with her long term. Mm hmm. But this child is just in our way. Right. So literally, right. So it's like, hmm, what do we, what do we, what, what, what makes this so hard? Like what, what makes the child such a big hurdle in terms of, first of all, do you, do you want to be a father? Are you already a father? Right. You know, you got to work through that. Like I already got three kids. I don't need another one. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. That happens more often in pregnancy centers than people Um, know. It was one of the most interesting things. I remember going back and looking at as a while ago, I looked at, um, Guttmacher has done a couple of times the survey of women having abortions. Why are you having the abortion? So, and and at this point you can kind of compare these two. I don't remember the years off the top of my head, but they're spread out a a decent bit. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, when you compare them on this table, they kind of all line up and there's not a lot of change, you know? So 
rape and incest stays at one yeah, percent right. or or about half a percent, and and like mm-hmm. a lot of different things, just like economic reasons, stay at roughly the same numbers. The only reason that changes a lot because one of them was in. I think it was the late eighties or maybe early nineties. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll link to it in the description. Cool. Um, versus when they asked again later, I think at least 10 years later, then one that changed a lot was, um, the second time they did it, there were a lot more women saying I'm choosing the abortion because I already have too many kids. Yeah. That was the one that changed a lot. It wasn't so often in the beginning, mm-hmm. but then as those like, you know, the, the more passionately pro-choice women who maybe were even involved in trying to make it legal in the first place, as those women got older and had a lot of kids at some point, and then were like, well, I'm not going to have more than three kids or whatever. Right. That was happening. That's happening more often now. Yeah. Which okay. people don't think about. People think about abortion being like a teen atheist problem. And I'm just yeah. saying it's not just teen atheists. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that's that was actually a lot of the guys, because they had like other baby mamas. You mm-hmm. know, there's a lot of there's a lot of variables that mm-hmm. come into it that we don't take into consideration. Yeah. Um, so for my first couple, that's what I was learning. So I was literally striking out so bad because my aim was I had been trained to they for one, they need the gospel. Right. We got to get them saved. And it's like, if they don't leave this room saved, I failed. And it's like, um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm missing bad on this one. So scaling back and really literally, I had to like fast and pray about this, man. Cause mm. I was like, I'm striking out so bad with mm. these first couple of guys. And it's like, they're leaving. I felt like they were leaving. Like this dude is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this was like, awkward. Right. This was super <laughs> awkward. Like, you should probably never do this again, bro. Yeah, like that's how I feel don't like. Don't come they, back here. Like, don't nah. make me come back here. <laughs> so, and that could be good because I want you to stay out of here. But at the same time, it was like I had to really think through, like, Lord, what what is what is going on? Like, why yeah. why is he in the same situation? Mm-hmm. It could be a different young lady, but he cares about her. All these different variables, right? So, really, um, God showed me John four with the woman at the well, and it was literally coming having a conversation being relational so <laughs> i'm into say, that yeah it's like oh okay <laughs> so what i literally like is showing me that and walking through like john four and what ended up happening in terms of she went out and went back into the city and was like yeah i talked to you know jesus ah. and then all of a sudden he needed to stay because it was so many more all that so that was like the revelation that i got in terms of like man i just need to talk to these guys like figure out all those variables that every person that walks in the door of a pregnancy center is bringing a story. Yeah. And if we're not willing to figure out the story, we'll mm. never know why this decision is so important. Huh. So for the guy, it was kind of like, all right, man, you know, I'm going to start with something corny. Like, <laughs> hey, I love the Braves. You like baseball? Like something weird. Yeah. Or I'm a big guy. So yeah. they'll be like, no, I know you play ball somewhere. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I kind of did, you know. <laughs> And being in North Carolina, I could say ECU and they would be like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, man, that's what's up. And then they would probably on their phone look me up or something. It's right, fine. Right. I'm, I'm cool with that. Google like, me. See it's on fine. Wikipedia. Yeah. yeah, it's like, it's cool. You know, had a pretty rough career. Did that, did that <laughs> so. build up? Did that build up? I love your humility. Uh, did that, did that build up like a, um, like kind of like a, a quick rapport yeah. with the guys if they Definitely. were into football? Yeah. Oh, man. That that's was so cool. That was, a, I feel like that was a blessing. Because, uh-huh. like, do we, to throw out a weird number, I would say eight times out of ten, <laughs> a guy, if they saw my size, yeah. and then if they, in the room that I was in, I had, like, an ECU poster, you know, that had my senior year because I was on it. Mm-hmm. So, it was, like, all that kind of stuff. And it's, like, it was an easy, quick trust. Yeah. Thing. So. That's brilliant, though. Dude. The fact that you were able to use that and you thought to use that or oh, you man. actually put the thing in there. So, you're, like, trying to lead them a little bit that way. Exactly. To build that rapport. That is hey. really, really smart. And I'm jealous because I don't have something like that when I walk onto a college campus. Well, I mean, but you're the man. So just just go with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They I mean? don't know that. <laughs> anyway, okay. So right. so you start, so you figure out one, you can build rapport with them with the football thing. And yep. two, mm-hmm. it sounds like you figured out instead, I'm gonna rephrase what I kind of hear you saying. Is instead oh, yeah, of kind yeah. of running them through sort of a a script. A list of scripted questions yep. or mm-hmm. or your own spiel you yep. figured out that this only works if you if you listen to them right get them to start telling you their story yes 
interacting with it, being relational, and then suddenly everything turns around. Boom. Now we're at the we're at Imagine why you're that. here. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> oh yeah. But it's like Gary's so cool. I don't mind actually telling him now how I actually feel about yeah. why I'm here and why I need I why I need for her to abort. So that so, has to I have to ask you, okay, so like that has to be more than just the football thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like what is it? Like, like, break down a little bit why they felt like you were so cool and willing to quickly, like, I'm going to tell yeah. you all the craziest things going on in my life. So I think because I'm really quick to not bear my soul, mm -hmm. but hey, you're real. I'm you can pinch like it's going to hurt. Yeah. You pinch me, it's going to hurt. Like, yeah. I want you to understand that in this conversation we're having. Mm -hmm. So if there's a moment where we're talking about even sports and I hear it like I'm praying and I'm listening for what can, what is he saying that I can listen, take in and respond to that's going to prick him in terms of, Oh, well, dang, even, even though he played football at a division one college, he did these things. That's cool. But man, he has some issues growing up or he had, mm. you know, some things he faced, you know, because he didn't go to the NFL. So he faced some depression. You know? So you got real with them yeah. and told them about that? Oh, or yeah. they had to just in, like, infer that? It, I was waiting for the moment. Yeah. You know, so if there is like, let me give you a mock. Okay. So we're talking and it's like, he's like, oh, yeah, cool. You know, you played for ECU. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was it was fun. Like, man, it was a party school. Yeah, it was, man. You know, you can enjoy it too much. All that fun stuff, right? So then we get to talking and it's like, man, so like, but you're here. Like, did you play in the league or anything? Like, nah. I had some crazy things happen, um, and it, it got ugly kind of fast. And, yeah, I battled some things, man. And they were, oh, okay. And now I can see their, 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 their the, the spokes or whatever. Yeah. Stuff is starting to move a little bit. So where they go, I put the ball in their court because I'm willing to be vulnerable. Now, yeah. are you? You know, yeah. so it's kind of like Interesting. that's the, the motivation of trying to get that conversation to move to get into those variables of why they think they need to abort. Yeah. So yeah. that's hmm. – that's really, really key in terms of, again, that relational aspect. Because a lot of, that's why I love your art. Because a lot of what I feel like people don't understand mm -hmm. about the pregnancy center effort yeah. is not just to take a Bible and beat, you know, the gospel into people. It's like, I literally am a decision away from just these tables turning in right. terms of what this huh. looks like. And it's like, you need mm -hmm. to know that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not on any kind of high horse here. Right. It's You're like, not, like, in the, like judging him. It's like, look, I could totally have been you just, like, five years ago. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. E easy. <laughs> Especially being a football player. And that um, makes sense so yeah. that then they would feel safer to yeah. open up to you. Most I definitely. think there's also something, you didn't say this, but I'm going to say, I think there's also just something about your personality, too. Oh, I think you're yes. just really easy to talk to. And you're particularly at, like likable and charismatic. And at, I imagine, my wife about that. I, don't know. I imagine that helps. <laughs> no, I imagine your, your wife is the one who knows that best. But I, I imagine that probably helped too. Um, okay, so you're doing that work. Yes, it's going really well now. Yes, yes, yes. Everyone's so, so impressed. No, oh it. gosh, don't know. No, <laughs> it's just it's just going well. Of seeing clients, seeing more guys come in, mm -hmm. having more success with those guys yeah. that come in that. You know, if they came in abortion minded, they're leaving intends to carry, but they're not in they're not leaving where they're like, Girl, you gotta have this baby. It's right. more like, Man, we can do this. Right. So how do we get there? Like, for instance, you know, in those relational conversations, it might take thirty to forty five minutes to get there or an hour or however long, yeah. but we gotta be willing to do that for one. Yeah. But two, his only hang up might have been, Man, I'm underemployed. I don't really mm -hmm. make enough. Mm hmm. Well, what if I'm out in the community building relationships? You might know a potential person that he could exactly. work for or whatever. Pick up a part-time oh, business that's owners. So cool. So that's something else I started doing. That's cool. So, so just building community relationships. So I just wow. started with all the churches that actually donated to, to the pregnancy center that I yeah. was I just went to all the men's ministry breakfasts. Uh -huh. I started going. I was like, hey. All I the 6 a.m. pancake things. Oh, yeah. gosh. You know, if it wasn't for the pancake, man, <laughs> I don't know. But it's like, hey, give me. I, all I'm asking for is five minutes. I would love to kind of share what we do. Yeah. And then it was so crazy because so many people have been given to the pregnancy center for years. Yeah. Didn't, had no clue what they were writing this check for. Yeah. 
But now they hear this, you know, yeah. like, oh, now they're serving fathers. When they start doing that? Yeah. So it worked in a number of different ways yeah. to help the praise center and the effort. So mm-hmm. now if you're a business owner, you know, and I got I got this guy, I'm sending them to the guy that I met at the thing. Yeah. If that's all it takes. And the guy could be like, man, if, well, if I get this job, cool. Right. That's all I was really right. worried about. Right. So it was either I got to find huh. something else or she got to get rid of the baby. Okay, we eliminated that. So, so what what year is this that you get started doing this? Because what I'm trying to figure out yeah. is, were you one of kind of the early pregnancy center male volunteers or staff gotcha. uh, people? Or because because like I know this happens, but yeah, 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 yeah. Because mm-hmm. when I do like banquets and stuff, I I usually try to do a tour of the facility and stuff, and it's yeah. pretty typical for there to be some kind of a men's program. Although I think that right. varies exactly what that means. Exactly. But was this like, is this like one of the early ones or is it just <sighs> the first time this particular center had, had someone like you? Exactly. So the latter. So just the first okay. time this particular center, because there's tons of like guys so are doing then this. Why, so. Okay. So then I have to ask <laughs> the inevitable <laughs> next question. Is, then why hadn't someone else who had already gone through what mm. you had gone through put together some kind of a more specific training for guys like you? on how to do this i well there there are some that are that are out there that are, that have been doing i feel like good work uh-huh. so um tony trammell with dadhood he's a great friend but he's been in it for a while like yeah. like he's been doing this and he's doing great things it's just more so i think there is a part of it that um to be honest is just notoriety hmm. and just um what how does this get out? How do we disseminate, you know, the good work that's happening in, um, you know, in Reno, Nevada with a guy that's there named Otto Kelly, who's doing awesome work or right. how, like, we just don't know about it. Right. You know, there are, so, there's all these guys at local centers, but they're not the ones usually going to the care net conference exactly. or whatever. And they're, they're just, all not all networking. And there's not one of them as like, I care about a platform. I care about making courses. He's just, Trying to do good work. Exactly. Like, so kind of they all get thrown into the deep end <laughs> separately. <laughs> so everybody is in their corner of the world trying to figure out what in the world are we doing? And I feel like that more and more has been like, it's being illuminated. And I want to illuminate it more because I feel like yeah. that's where I was. Yeah. It was like, even though I'm figuring all this stuff out, I feel like I'm on an island. Like, yeah. am, I, am I the only one like kind of working with guys? Yeah. No, I'm not. But it feels like it. So, yeah. you know, just figuring that out. So this is probably part of the reason Rowan hired you to work at Karen International. I, I'm assuming. I, I'm assuming. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it, it was really funny because Rowan and I, the the way this the conversation was started between us, because I knew of him from his National Fatherhood Initiative days when he was the president there. Mm-hmm. Super respected him and all that kind of good stuff. Yep. And then it was at a, a conference in Winston Salem, and we both were speaking. And I had to go on after him, which was like, thank you. Right. Um, I'm, yeah. <laughs> anyway. So I was like, I got to follow up the president. of. He was right. already president of Karen at this right. point. I'm like, gosh. So. You think about it the other way. You think he just opened for you. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't think of that. One. But, um, but yeah. So what was cool was he stayed after and he, he listened. And then right after that, he connected and was like, hey, man, like, man, man. God is kind of moving and I kind of hear what you're talking because yeah. I'm talking how we're talking and we stayed in contact with one another. Mm. And then when the position was formed and made, it just was like, oh, here we go. So mm. now it's more, I kind of see this as a connector Yeah. in those moments of when I was sitting in the room and I'm like, man, I'm trying to figure this all out by myself. Like, right. no, there's guys that are out here right. in these pregnancy centers doing great work. So how do we just find them and connect them? You know, and we can always bounce stuff off each other and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So that's kind of what I feel like this position is doing, you know? So it's kind of like cool beans. It sounds like you were really good at what you were doing at the local center. And at some point it's like, okay, how do we spread this more effectively? Like if we have trainings for the counselors who talk to the women, exactly. if we have trainings for the sonographers, if we have trainings for the fundraiser, I've been at the kind of conference. If you have trainings, we we have (laughs) have like a a track for all these people. Yes. Maybe we should have some more. Yeah. Not saying there was nothing, but more for, because maybe it's becoming more common for pregnancy centers to realize, hey, 
boyfriend's yeah. in the waiting room and they're going to have a car ride home. Like, exactly. let's, let's, let's get some help for this. Yes. And so have you been able to do that? Have you been able to help other centers figure like, like, like yeah. train the dudes? Yeah. And on how to been, do this better? It's been great. So I feel like that's been like super just is that's the, well, I'm, I'm kind of extrovert. So it's kind of like, <laughs> So that's cool. like just just a little. So it's kind of like that's the energy, you know. Yeah. So, sorry, football reference here. All right. Okay. So, in as an offensive lineman, when you get your hands on the defensive line and you you push them back and you put them on his back, it's called a pancake. Right. It's a pancake block. Okay. All right. My pancake now is to go train a center and then walk with that center and then they can two months be like, hey. We're seeing a little movement. We're seeing a little something kind of spark and happen. You know, how we do our paperwork, how we approach the paperwork, how we approach the guy. Like, that for me, ugh, that gets me going because it's kind of mm. like, man, that's so beautiful because that's really all it takes. Mm. And then from that perspective, you just have the tools in place of how does God want to use your center for where you are in the community? Yeah. Because it's not going to look the same across the board. But you have the tools in place. To say let's go. So you're working with them even before they've hired uh, yeah. the guy it, in that role. Sometimes can, both. It can it could be they're looking for the guy, or they already have the guy, or they already have guys. They have a team, so it's all ends of the spectrum. So, are you ever having to like try to convince them that they ought to try to get a guy? Are you ever like 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 uh, that early in the process? Or usually, are they kind of already on board? They're kind of already on board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that, somewhere that, on this process, and you're going to help them get to the next step or two. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so if there's a pregnancy center listening, that is like. <laughs> I'm on board with Gary. I want his help. <laughs> How do they get in contact with you? This is uh, the end of the interview. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like, right now, they're interested. How are they going to get in contact with oh, you man. so you can help them? So just email me, gframan at care-net.org, and let's just get it. Let's get the party started. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of like, <laughs> really, that's all it takes. And from there, it's like just connecting and figuring out the next, well, in this day and age, you know, the next Zoom call where yeah. we can have... We just start figuring stuff out because it's, it's possible. Yeah. You know, it, it's real. And when statistically the guy is the number one person she's going to talk to about making this decision, yeah. we need him to be as educated and as confident in how he responds to her as yeah. he can. So why not? So if you were talking to a pregnancy center director mm -hmm. who is not under Karenat, um, let's say yep. they're kind of one of the unaffiliated centers. They got yep. started by like maybe like a super pro-life church yeah, and they yeah, bought yeah. the house next door yeah. and they kind of just like, we're just, we're just going to do this on, <laughs> it's on our go own. Like, it, yeah. This happens. And, and sometimes really good things happen and sometimes less good things happen, which is why it's good that there are things like Karenat and Heartbeat and, and places like that exactly. that can help with kind of the quality <laughs> control. But so imagine you're talking to to one of these people, and it's just kind of like a little bit more old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Is you know several really sweet older ladies that are just kind of running this thing and they're doing their best, and they haven't like it's never occurred to them because they've right. never been to your conference or Harpy's conference or whatever. Yeah, it's never occurred to have a dude working in the pregnancy center, <laughs> and they're like, yeah. like, like, like this is a weird place for a guy to work. Like this is a this is a it's a very feminine place or whatever. <laughs> like. What would you tell them? How, how would yeah. you try to convince them that that is actually good for men to be involved in pregnancy center? Yeah. Work? Oh man. So the immediate the immediate thought for me is not to necessarily go straight to the men being involved in just the decision, mm -hmm. but more so men are involved in the process. Like, not to be super lewd or weird, but it's like he helped right. getting her here. Right. <laughs> so it's kind of like. That's a process that, you know, we don't want to, like, ignore. You right. know, there was something there. And usually in those cases, it's kind of like you're, you're looking at more people who might be, um, and I'm saying this as nice as I can, but more the Bible thumper. Yeah. Who is like, you know, there's sin here. And, then right. you know, and right. I get it. And uh, yes, we're not condoning anything. Right. But if we're going to do that, then there's a guy that's involved in that. Right. So we need to talk to him, too. Like <laughs> that needs to happen. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like, I don't want to leave him out in the cold. Do you? Right. Like, you know, we kind of want to have some interaction with them. Right. So what if we just had a couple guys just right. around that could talk to these guys, you know, if they come in or, yeah. you know, like, so I would kind of come from that angle right. more so than just pro-life abortion, right. you know, you know, march on the mall. Like, I'm not going to go that far versus just, Hey, we just need to, we need to talk to them too. Yeah, we can help. We can figure some things out. 
and just kind of let it organically grow and just kind of, you know, yeah. figure it out. So, so this would be part of your answer then also, I think, to someone who says like, you know, there's, there, I think there's some people that want the pro-life movement to be a very female thing, at least yeah. or female led thing. True, true, true. Um, yeah. And I'm, and I'm the first one to admit, and I've admitted this before at a, like a PR level or like an optics level, yeah. it looks better for uh, some of the speakers to be women. I, I get that. Okay? Totally get it. Totally right there, right it. there with you. Yeah. Um, and so like, what role do you think men should have in the pro-life movement? Because yeah. some, mm-hmm. like, I, I think like, you know, a lot of people are like, they're fine with, okay, fine. You can be an apologist, you know, <laughs> you can, you can go argue with first choice people. Yeah. Or, uh, like you can do that, like, like yeah. that kind of work. Yeah. Um, but obviously there are more things for men to do in the pro-life movement. But what are your, like, kind of your general thoughts about men's role in the pro-life movement? Yeah, man. So I think it goes back to the whole thought of this movement and, you know, the original guys, guys design. So, you know, husband, wife, child, like if you take a wife out, it gets weird of the equation. You take husband out, it gets weird without, yeah. but you know, there's the child still on the other end of this. That's like the equal equals two or whatever. I don't know, but men's role outside of just being apologist and defending it. Well, thank the Lord. Hallelujah. But there's holes in guys. Hmm. And what I mean by that is discipleship holes hmm. where I feel like a lot of the stuff that I saw in the room with the guy, uh-huh. it really was more discipleship, like quick discipleship moments that kind of got him thinking in another whole trajectory of how he now views abortion. Hmm. So that still needs to happen. There's guys who have a ton of life they've lived that now need to like walk that out with another guy. Mm. So, and that doesn't mean you go in, like I said, you're not going in there like, like sit down, wait, you know, I'm going to, I got some stuff for you here, buddy. Like, that's not what I'm saying, but it's like, man, we got stuff we need to talk about. Yeah. And it just so happens that in this position, at the end of this, you're talking about telling your girl to abort. Yeah. And here's why we don't want to do that because of maybe somebody forgot to tell you how much you mean to the Lord, how much Mm. you, you know, so that is a a huge area outside of just, you know, defending the issue. Right. Now we need to transition to, we need guys that are in, that are doing this and a pregnancy center can be a hub for that, but it's kind of like, we just need men in the church. Like, Mm. Hey guys, you know, um, we need both. Yeah. Both both can be really good at certain things. Yeah. You know, that that's, that's, it's needed. Yeah. So it's kind of like, but that's not necessarily again illuminated to be like, oh yeah, you know, first thing a guy thinks of is like, let me just go vote the right way or let me go do something. Right. And it's like, okay. But then, hey, I'm dealing with guys over here that are like, man, my dad sucked. Right. <laughs> so it's like, help me. And they're trying to figure that out. Yeah. And they just want somebody to walk with them. Yeah. And it's and like it's now. Probably not going to be a gal. Yeah. That it's, they it's want. Just, Walking them through exactly Pre- their daddy issues, right? Is this really not? Yeah. Not saying yeah. that it's not possible. It's just sure. eh, it's probably not. So, sure. <laughs> just being honest. <laughs> so if I get to be vulnerable with another guy, yeah, and it's like, hey, I, I think that's key. I know, yeah. and I've told the story before, so I won't tell it very long. But I know, like, I, there's a certain sort of related aspect to this that really surprised me a few years mm-hmm. ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got this guy on staff named Jacob who does cyber counseling, uh-huh. and. Uh, we were uh, starting to think about putting together this sidewalk counseling course. And he said something that really surprised me. In fact, I ended up writing an article about it. I'll link to it in the description. Uh, <laughs> but like, he talked about why there needs to be men also sidewalk counseling. And for mm. me, I always thought of sidewalk counseling as like, okay, look, this part of the pro-life movement, that's... <laughs> That that should be girls out there because yeah. it's like like just seems natural like those are going to be the safest looking people to the people that right. we're talking to like that right, just right, makes right. so much sense and then Jacob explained well no but who's the one usually hanging out outside the abortion clinic on his phone or smoking because he doesn't want to be inside yeah, that waiting room exactly. it's the dude yeah and guys can talk to guys in a certain way. This is true. That a lot of times women can't pull off. Like you can build up some rapport. And at some point when he gets to where he can do it, he can like really push them a little bit yeah. to man up 
and yeah. <laughs> take care of their kid that it, it wouldn't work as well sure. coming from from a woman. So it's like so here's like we need both. You need you you need you want at least one male and at least one female sub counselor kind of working as a team yeah. mm-hmm. um on the sidewalk because of course there are still going to be those people that yep. you know are going to want to talk to a woman but a lot of times the guys are the ones that you can actually talk to that are willing to talk to us. So it's just like, this is yeah, interesting man. to see, you know, <laughs> God created yeah. us with all these different skills and abilities yeah. and things that we're good at, things that we're not so good at. And it's cool to see oh, gosh, the diversity yeah. of the pro-life movement. Yeah, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. That's so good. Yeah. Just to activate it. It's like, it's there. It's mm-hmm. just like, push the button. Let's go. Let's activate all this good stuff. So yeah, that's key. I love it. Okay, so here's a question for you. So I think a lot of times, even when pro-life, let's let's kind of get outside of pregnancy work. You yeah. talk about mm-hmm. like just pro-life advocates, people yeah. who, mm-hmm. you know, the kinds of people who listen to this podcast, you know, yeah. like who, who <laughs> want to be a good defender of the pro-life position, yep. be a good apologist. A lot of times, you know, when you're at an outreach or you're or you're just, you know, communicating with people, maybe on social media or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's natural for pro-life people to think like the most important audience, the most important p- kind of person for me to talk to if they're pro-choice is going to be a woman mm, because yeah. she's the one who might get pregnant in a, a series of months or or years and yeah. is going to be abortion vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we kind of focus on women. Why do you think that is important for us to be talking to pro-choice guys too? Yeah. Yeah. So the importance I would say would be, it would be more, I, well, I'm trying to think. So the, 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 the way I guess guys were kind of geared mm-hmm. is, you know, being fixers and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So, you know, it's like, Sometimes you know, to a fault. Yeah. A, exactly. So, <laughs> um, even if you can't fix anything, so it's like, <laughs> all right. Um, but a pro choice guy, mm-hmm. usually, not saying this is the rule right. is an apathetic guy mm-hmm. at, at heart when it comes to this, you right. know, you know, this issue. They think it's a woman's issue. Like, yeah, it's why, like, what, why, why should they have a position? What, what, what am I needed here for? Right. Like, so again, this goes back to my thought of when I'm approaching that guy, it's yeah. kind of like, Hmm. So you can go through a series of questions to kind of figure out, Okay, if you're involved in a pregnancy, mm-hmm. you know, if you doing this the 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 good old natural way, do you not think you have involvement? Do mm-hmm. you not feel like that there's something that you now bring to this right. without just being as weird and as right. weird as possible? But it's like you have for some reason it just doesn't click for a guy. Like really, you're you're involved in this. Like it's almost this thought of. Like a young lady finds out she's pregnant. Right. Like she pees on a stick. She right. sees the two lines. Right. Ah, she's pregnant. She's automatically society wise. She's a mother. Right. What's a guy? He's still a guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's not necessarily a father. He can just walk away. He can just, oh, you're pregnant. Oh, okay, cool. Right. And just go out the door. Out. And what I'm saying is time out. It's like, no, that responsibility aspect. Right. We got to deal with that. Yeah. Like, you know, you can't just turn around and walk away right. because you were involved. You were involved with this, bro. So you can't just say, you know, oh, it's her, it's her decision. It's like, no, yeah. we're at a point where, again, this is important to understand long game moving forward. Like, she's literally going to look at that stick, see this. The next person she's going to look at is you because mm. you help these two lines become possible. Right. So, no, you can't just, you know, how you can't cop out. Yeah. <laughs> and just say, "Oh, well, you know, it's her her body her choice." It was it was you were part of this, buddy. Right. So, so, what do you say to the guy then who says after you've kind of gone through that is like, "Look, yeah. but it is in her body and she's the like she wants the abortion." Yeah. I don't really care. Um, but it's like, clearly this is her decision to make. Like, right. what do you want me to do? I feel like even if I did want her to have the baby, me saying that, I mm. feel like now I am this jerky guy who's pushing yeah. her to do what she doesn't want with her body or whatever. Right. Like, like right. What, what, what do you say to that guy? Yeah. It's, it- no, nobody's asking you to go be a jerk about it. <laughs> <laughs> there is a non-jerk way. There, there, there's a non-jerk way. <laughs> and it's called conversation. 
That's really it. Dialogue. It's like, like, just, you know, ask certain questions. Like, if you, I guarantee you, she wants to hear how you really feel about it, not just mm. how you think she feels about it. Mm. Like, she wants to hear your thoughts. I think that's key. Like, yeah, she wants to hear them. And it's like, how you deliver them, yes. Right. Like, you cannot be, you know, a butthole with this. <laughs> and, you know, I, don't, I don't want you to do that. But she does want to hear from you. And that's something mm. where it's like, don't just throw the whole conversation in the trash. Yeah. No, she wants to hear from you. So you don't know what she's mm. thinking if she just hears certain things from you. Yeah. So you don't know where she's sitting unless you just talk about it. But guys, we usually just, you know, I don't want yeah. to talk about this. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's amazing. Cause I feel like emotion is not a word that's usually associated with a guy. No. But I feel like that's a load of crap. Yep. Because it is. Yeah. It's really funny what, what yeah. we tend to be emotional over. Yeah. But it doesn't mean we're not emotional. Yeah. So, you know, we're just like, oh my gosh, this is going to get sappy. Like, I can't talk to her. But like, no, she needs you more than ever. Yeah. To say how you really feel. And maybe sometimes it takes a guy to tell you that so that mm. you can now think about it and be like, hmm, you know what? Dang. Maybe I can, you know, just say something yeah. and not be a jerk, but right. just let her know. Right. And I've had that situation in the coaching room with a guy where literally just telling him about the abortion process and then all these types of things and making him think like, man, just how do you really feel? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, well, you're I, allowed to feel yeah. something about yeah, that. I, it's OK. Right. Yeah. It, it's OK, dude. Like. Don't let society beat you down so right. much that you don't think you can't say anything right. like right. you can. I don't want you to be a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> so just we want uh -huh. you to say it in a healthy way. So yeah. let me ask you a different question. And you might not have an answer for this. And it's okay if you don't, because it's, well, it might good. it might be outside <laughs> your your yeah. your area of, of 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 expertise or experience. But mm -hmm. one of the hardest things that we deal with on a college campus mm -hmm. is dealing with apathetic people. Yeah. All right. I mean, I was at, I did outreach at, and at uh, Wilmington college, uh, oh, like a yeah. year or two ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and man, that was the most apathetic campus I've ever <laughs> been on. Like, it's Ooh. just like, they're right next to the beach. They don't want to talk to me. <laughs> they're done with class. They yeah, want to go to the beach. Exactly. Like, like, they're just like walking right by. We have like one or two conversations all day. All right. Oh, man. It's just like, it's like one of those tough situations. Yeah. Um, and, it's like, we've got to do our best. Like, so if, if you have someone who does stop and is willing mm -hmm. to talk to you, yeah, but that is super apathetic about the issue. This is one of those people where I still don't feel like I have mastered the art of getting them out of apathy. I, it's like, I, yeah. it's not like I don't have anything to try. I've got things that I try. Yeah. I just don't feel like I have yet discovered like the super uh, effective or like consistent. Right. Just thing. this is it. I can go to this and right. it'll move them. So you know. dealt with apathetic people a lot, but part of what you were doing with them though, which doesn't apply to the college campus is you can be like, look, you there's a baby and you, yeah. you were involved. This is why you shouldn't be apathetic. Right, right. Do you have advice for people like me who are dealing with just apathetic, not currently pregnant students? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you get people out of it? Cause you talk to those people, they're like, like, Basically, just in this mode of like, I don't really care about anything, man. You know, one day the sun's going to explode and we're all going to die. It's like nothing really matters <laughs> down at the level and just yeah. like care about something, you know. So, oh, gosh. help yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, that's hilarious. <laughs> the sun's going to blow up. Yeah. Just, you know, we're nothing matters. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, what was really cool about the pranks that I worked in, we were literally right across the street from NC State. Hmm. We're down the street from Shaw University, St. All University, you know, like historically black colleges. So It's a good location for a pregnancy center. Dude, perfect. So what I started doing was I would just go and visit the male dorms mm -hmm. and I would talk to the RAs and be like, hey, I know they have to do, they have to meet certain qualifications of some of them. I don't know all of them, but that's what I ran into. Like they had like little meetings and I would just be like, hey, I just want to talk about, you know, fatherhood stuff. And not be misleading, but yeah. let them know this is who I work for. This is what I would love to talk about. Mm -hmm. And that's where I kind of, what you're talking about, started thinking through how to hone in on yeah. the apathetic guy that even like if you're dealing with, seriously, like 
a homosexual guy? Mm-hmm. Like what? Like what is he? Like all these thoughts of just like I don't really care, dude. Right. At some point, somebody in your family cared enough because you're here. So, and what I mean by that is you're here standing with me or talking to me. So your parents, whether your dad is a saint or whether he is the devil, he met your mom. Things happened on an adult level. You're well, here. One thing led to another. Now you're here. Exactly. So <laughs> at some point, this is happening all throughout the world, all through like births are happening. You know, so what, how do you feel about how that goes in terms of to, for, for creation purposes or procreating and all that kind of stuff? Like, is that okay? Like, is that cool? Is that something where, you know, at that point, if a loving, you know, husband and wife get together and have a child, that's a beautiful thing. If a boyfriend and a girlfriend love each other and they do things and now, you know, there's this child, but they're not ready yet. Okay, but they did the same things. This is just the element of the the two situations are different. The husband and wife, you you assume that they're good. You assume that they have great jobs and lots of money and stuff and you know money in the bank and savings accounts. And then this these college age kids, man, they're out here struggling. Can't take care of a kid, but you're doing the same things action wise. You're doing the same things, mm-hmm. you know, as that married couple. So is that okay? Is that cool? Like what, what changes that? And that's a really, that's just for me. I'm not saying that for everybody. That's kind of how I've gotten into some good conversations. Is the okay thing, are, are you asking them if they think like premarital sex is, is okay? Without is saying asking? premarital sex. But that's what you're asking. But that's about. what I'm basically asking. Because now you're, because you're not necessarily for me. I wasn't going to get them in the conversation of the abortion and the issue and caring and all uh-huh. that kind of stuff. So I'm just trying to find some common ground. Yeah. Or I'm trying to find something. I want to say common ground. I'm trying to find somewhere yeah. where we can spark some thinking, something going on where you're going to, we can talk about it and right. it'll always hopefully lead us to why, to what we want to talk about, not right. why, to what we want to talk about in the abortion perspective. So, so I'm, I'm skeptical that that would like, has, has that worked yeah. for you? So <laughs> to, to kind of, you walk through that. Yeah. It's like it can it can get ugly just because of it can be a weird way of approaching it. Mm-hmm. Because now it's like, well, we're consenting adults. Like right. we can do whatever it's we like want. What, like maybe what you, one percent of the college population thinks there's anything wrong with having premarital sex. Exactly. So it's like, mm, dude, come on, you're you're reaching. Right. It's like, but for me, it's like, am I reaching because I actually what I'm saying is do you care about her? I'm not talking about just actually just having sex. You're not asking them if it's right that they're having sex. You're right. asking them if they Do, really care about their the, the their per, partner, the partner, or the person, whatever. So, okay. because nine times out of ten is not not everything is the one night stand. You have some relationship right. with this person. You've right. known them. They were a friend first, or whatever. I don't know. So you care. Okay. So that means that if you find yourself in this situation now, do you think she would care? What you have to say now. See what I'm saying? So, okay. So let, let me make sure I understand what you're doing. I think what you're doing is you are saying, okay, they're apathetic about abortion. But you say, okay, but like, do you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend but, or whatever? Right. Like, do you care about this person? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if, hypothetically speaking, she ended up pregnant, right. like you'd care at that point. Possibly, right? Poss- because right. like Possibly. It, it, it at least affects her. Right. Even if you think abortion is fine, like is is it affects her, so that's gonna matter. Um do you think that maybe you should have something to say to her in that situation? Like something, something. Right. That's the those are the dots you're connecting. Yes. That's or, interesting. Yeah, so attempting to connect those dots. Yeah. And and I'm being real honest because Sometimes it, it, it's just, it can be weird. And sometimes yeah. those dots don't really connect. Right. But I f- or they might not be in a relationship at the time. Exactly. Or- so there's a lot of, you know, gaps that can happen. With yeah. that. I'm just telling something that yeah. I try to use, yeah. that I u- that I use more often. It's interesting. Just because, I mean, it, it really like, so now it opened up conversations with the guys for me to talk to them about like, hey, do you actually have a thought? Yeah. That she's like that opened that up. Right. Right. So that could work. Um, it's just another yeah. 
what I call weird approach, right. you know? But, you know, you, it's like we got to find ways at times to just like, yeah. as the Holy Spirit leads us in these conversations. And I just found myself talking that way a lot with college students, especially just the guys in those dorms. And now it's like, man, yeah, you know, just kind of watching them kind of have to grapple with, I mean, she cool, <laughs> you know, I think, you know, I don't love her, but, right. you know, but just watching them do that. So I'm just, I'm kind of sitting back and like, okay, he's thinking. <laughs> we're, we're, we're at least going in the at direction. At least he's thinking. Yeah, at least he's thinking. There's a little progress. You know, because that'll move him from apathetic of just, dude, I don't care. Yeah. No, you kind of do. So how we, how do we get there? Or maybe you don't right now, but you might, might. later. So let's exactly. think about that. Yeah. That's an interesting approach. I've never yeah. thought of trying that it's, angle. Dude, it's super weird. And, 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 and I, to- it's not. Yeah, there's nothing about that that's like beta tested to like yeah. super work. I'm just saying like yeah. I found some success. You found some success. Some success. That's talking meaningful that to me. Yeah, so it that's was meaningful to me. It's like okay, cool, man. Because so, I feel like I've usually just tried to I've tried to get them out of apathy for at least one thing. I'm trying to get like exactly. what do you care about in your life? And that's actually a better way of saying it. What I think I'm trying to say, mm-hmm. that's a better way to like. Except, round it but up. what's different between you and me is like you're focusing them towards like their their girlfriend. Yeah. And yeah. I'm trying to focus them on like, all right, what is some other issue? Like you care about pot being yeah, legal. Yeah. What do you I like get, what do you care? Like, I get you it. Gotta care about something. Exactly. Like, I'm I'm trying to just get them in touch with that like I'm trying to get through that tough exterior. Yeah. That might be real, but it also might just be put on. It might be a facade. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a facade, I'm trying to get in there like, help help me understand the real you. Like, I like yeah. I, don't, I don't think you are that uninterested in everything. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to, yeah. and maybe if I get there, we can get into basically talking about morality in general. Exactly. Um, yeah. You know, if, it, you know, if they think that pot should be legal, mm-hmm. right? This okay. So let's let's talk about that because like this is so because then we can start talking about like the moral versus legal thing. Like maybe, uh, it, you know, it, what, what, what do you think that all things that are wrong ought to be legal or illegal? And we can like I, I can try to find my way back there. there it takes yeah. a little while to it'll, get around. It'll be a roundabout approach <laughs> again, but it doesn't always work because sometimes I just feel like I'm just like. It's a brick wall, you know, yeah, just like pounding my it. head and, 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 and I can't get anything out of it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. So you got yeah. so it's, it's, it's a little bit different approach, but it's interesting. That's very, yeah. very interesting. Yeah, it was, it, it's something. I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's a way, <laughs> you know, but I think one thing too, just really quickly, yeah. is like, I always kind of think through, we have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And sometimes those uncomfortable moments for us mm. is what is wrong with you? Why yeah. don't you care about something? Yeah. Like, oh, and yeah. then I'll leave the conversation. I'm frustrated. And then they're just bopping along in life. But I feel like that's where, you know, prayer, the yeah. power of prayer and knowing that God is sovereign. And if he wants that person to know who he is and to care, about, that's OK. Maybe yeah. something was in our conversation. Maybe right. that will have sparked that at least. Yeah. So, yeah, man, that's. So talk yeah. to pro-lifers for a minute. I mean, that's obviously that's most of our audience, although I mm. love that we have some pro-choice listeners. Thank yeah, you. I'm awesome. glad that you're yes. that you're listening. Yes. We value you. Um, so before, for people who oppose abortion, how would you want them to get involved in supporting abortion-minded and post-abortive men? Yeah. So, man, I think dealing more towards those holes and those, you know, emotional holes or those things because fatherlessness in itself, you can just look up, you know, there's tons of it in turn. Like there's issues, there's, yeah. there's problems. There's, there's people that are fighting, you know, against that. And that can have its own lane outside of men being involved, hmm. you know, in the abortion decision or whatever the case may be. But in that way, what I'm saying is that's the beauty of the gifts that we all have is that we can bring them together at some point Mm -hmm. and work towards a goal, right? So even if that's this pro-choicer, but you care about fatherlessness, you know, you care about these statistics and these numbers, I do as well. Mm -hmm. So what in the world can we do to, Mm -hmm. because a lot of it is going to be, again, those emotional holes and things like that. Okay, well, those things need to be closed. You know, those things need to heal. We need to find ways to do that. We need to, we need to come together to do that in some way, shape or mm. form. So I feel like it's more on guys like us, you know, people like us in the, in the pro-life, 
you know, this is what we believe, but hey, we see this overarching just issue. Yeah. Especially being a black guy and it's like African-American fatherlessness is crazy, ridiculous high statistic. Yeah. Okay, how do we approach this? How do how do mm. we come together about this? Because that's essentially gonna make our community stronger, our family stronger, our society mm. stronger. Like we there's a whole bunch of common ground, yeah. you know, that we can come together on that. Yeah. So don't just throw me away. Yeah. Pro choicer, because I am pro life. Like, don't throw right. me away because I I don't want to throw you away. Like, yeah. man, you're doing some good things over there. And then, you know, maybe <laughs> we can always talk and have conversations about certain things when it comes to, you know, life and decisions. Yeah. But, man, it's a whole bunch of stuff out here that can just strengthen our families, communities, society. Yeah. So we can find that common ground. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to loop back to your, your work with, with, with dads in a minute, but one more question yeah. before I move to that, what advice would you give uh pro-life people who they don't work in a pregnancy center, mm-hmm. but it might be like, they're a friend of a guy who's going to end up getting his girl pregnant yeah. at some point. And then, mm-hmm. you know, maybe that guy reaches out to this friend yeah. for like, it's like, they're best buds. And yeah. it's like, dude, this is this thing that happened. Like, I'm trying to figure it out. Like, mm. if they haven't gone through care net training, you know, right. like, like what, what basic advice would you give them if they're in a situation where they might be able to give a little bit of, I like, obviously yeah. they're not a counselor. Right. They right, right, don't think right. that they're a counselor if they don't have yeah. training for that, but like they've got to say something. Yeah. Yeah. So don't, don't immediately think that you got to like save them. Like, mm. like you don't have to be like, Oh my gosh, they can't do this or that. Like, don't like you're not God. You're just you're wanting to be a vessel used yeah. by God. You know, so kind of just stay there, still be their friend. Still just be there. Mm. Like hear it. If there's emotion, mm. if there's things that are there, like don't move from being a friend. Don't think you have to like shift to all of a sudden being like the super counselor or the super coach or the super, like you have to shift yeah. anything, just be there, like be willing to talk about it. And then when there's moments of bringing truth and clarity, be willing to do that too, because mm. you're their friend. Mm. So they, they, they want that first. So now if there comes like things that need to be clarified and how they move forward with it, because you have the relationship of mm-hmm. the, and the friendship, they're going to, hopefully they're hear hear you, Yeah, you know, when it's time to say something about like, Hey, I know this is crazy, bro, but man, I think you can do this or, you know, how can I help? And, you know, even, even what that looks like long-term and how he's like, I don't really know how to talk to her about it, you know, all that kind of good stuff. But so I would say first be still be a friend. Don't move. Don't think you have to shift into any other thought. Yeah. Be a friend. But number two, be willing to bring clarity and truth when the time is right for it. Yeah. Don't shy away from it either. Like, don't be such a friend, you know, that you're not, right. you know, that you're not willing to say what needs to be still said. Because yeah. maybe the Holy Spirit is guiding that conversation in that moment for you to say that. Yeah. I mean, weird plug. But I, I really gained a lot of that from when I, I heard you speak about and you use Colossians. Colossians, uh, yeah, uh, the, the four, song, five, through yeah. six. Connect yes. yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, Man. making the most of the opportunity. Like your speech, always be filled with grace, as though seasoned with salt, so that you will know how to uh, how. Oh shoot! How's it? <laughs> <laughs> you were so, so, so good. You were uh, going. I've I haven't been speaking because of COVID. <laughs> I haven't quoted this verse now in like six months. Oh, but, uh, it's the season with salt, so you will know how to make the most of the opportunity. There you I think go. that's what it is. So no, we're, we're, mm, no, I said that before. Oh come on! <laughs> Five, two, six, uh, so you will know. Look, I'm not. How to re- no, I know. No, how, you'll know how to how to how you should respond to each person. There you go. That's what it is. Because it's this that's, really cool thing where like it indicates. <laughs> You should respond differently to different people. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> I can't believe it. There you go, Pastor Josh. Yeah. Boom. And it's I'm like great at this. And the fact <laughs> that, you know, I've been to seminary and couldn't help you. That's not good. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to ignore that. But I feel like yeah. that's the case, though. Like, yeah. Because not enough salt doesn't really change anything. Yeah. Too much salt and you're overbearing. And yeah. it's like, I can't even eat this. Yeah. But just right. Yeah. 
is what the Lord wants to use you for. Yeah. So be the friend and yeah. then be willing to bring clarity and truth when it's necessary. That's the seasoning. Yes, yeah, the the good seasoning. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So 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 talk to us a bit about your work with dads because and this yeah. has even mm-hmm. gone outside of pregnancy center work. Like you've gone yeah. outside the yeah. walls of pregnancy centers. Mm-hmm. You have this heart for fatherlessness. Yes. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. And dad. So mm-hmm. I know you're doing like fatherhood oriented events and things like that. Like just yeah. talk a bit about that, that, that ministry that you're doing. Yeah. So that's really, really cool for me because it's like, if I get to do like, uh, you know, a speaking engagement for an event that's not about abortion, right. but it's about fatherlessness. It's kind of like the way I get to tie in, you know, the, 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 the lane mm-hmm. that God has given me to run in right now. It's kind of like, it all makes sense in terms of the need for the father, the need for a man, yeah. You know, to kind of just understand his role from the Lord, yeah. you know, and having that basis, like all of it is rooted in knowing, having your identity in, in Christ. But it's like, if you, even if you don't know that, like, or you don't live that, yeah, you still have to have certain like thoughts towards your family or how you're going to treat your children and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. And you don't realize sometimes how much your past relationship affects what you're doing now. Yeah. So that's a big motivator for me, you know, mm-hmm. and just to, to throw this out there, this is something that I use a lot because African-American community, roughly 70% fatherlessness, mm-hmm. right? That is horrid. We get that. So that's roughly saying that about 30% of fathers are left that are just doing the right thing, huh? Mm-hmm. You know, like, it, it's like, okay, so 70% that they're just, not there. They're missing right. or whatever. They're, right. they're not involved. So that means that there's 30% of guys that are just getting it right, hitting the ball out of right. the park and being fathers. Quick, quick, quick clarification question about that stat. With, yeah. with some of those, I mean, we don't have to go too deep into yeah. this issue, but would some of the guys in the 70% be in, be in jail? In yes. The, possibly. Yes, yes, yes. Like, yes, like yes. they might want to be doing the right, right thing, right. but and something I'm, happened. Yes. To clear, yes, definitely. Great clarifying because it's like, I kind of did what I feel like sometimes I, it's scary that I don't want to be done. I kind of just did it. But in that All 70%, right. like a lot of that is, you know, prison population, there's yeah. mental health stuff. There's, yeah. there's a lot of yeah. things that have made that number inflate. Right. Right. So some of those you. guys yes. might not even necessarily be guilty. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So it's just, but there are some guys that just walk. Yeah. That it, does happen for sure. Yeah. But you don't, you don't want to see that. But we need that clarity though. Yeah. Like, so thank you for that. Cause we need that yeah. needs to be said and done. Yeah. So um I think I was I was too intense of making my point. No, it's just no, it's hard like, when the microphones <laughs> come on. It's like yeah, it's true. I can't even remember my favorite Bible verse in the moment. So <laughs> you're good. <laughs> oh man. But good. There, there we go. One and one and one right there. But so in, in that, there's this there's this concept of the 30. Yeah percent that I like to like operate out of hmm. because I feel like I'm in the 30 hmm. because my dad was there. Right. But there was moments I wish I was in the 70s. Right. Somehow. So, right. so what do we do with those in the 30 that are feeling like me that are struggling? And I run into huh. that a lot as well. So That's it's like dad was there, but and then just fill in the blanks. So it's like you're basically saying, like, it's worse than you think. Yeah. Like you think three out of ten are in good shape. Yeah. Like, and but what if some of those aren't the best dads? Exactly. And and that's not not to just kind of throw shade at, at those dads, because it's like you can really feel like you're you're doing the best you can. Right. Because you really are. Right. Like that's really all you got. You don't really right. like your training or whatever. Right. Just it's life. Right. And maybe your dad was alcoholic. So right. now you found yourself, you right. know, you know, so it's that approach. Okay. Right. Versus just they're just being bad or a bump on a log or something. Like, no, it's just yeah. We just don't know. And I think in that knowing sometimes we miss what we're passing on to mm-hmm. our sons and daughters. Yeah. So that's something else that I found interesting huh. and in just being able to talk one-on-one with a guy or huh. even what I call training the trainer. Well, I, I didn't coin that, but it's like training the trainer. Like yeah. that's something that I like to get into yeah. because if I got a 12 guys in front of me that are ready to jump on board and be right. a practice center or whatever, it's kind of like it's an hey, interesting man. number you picked, but yeah. <laughs> it, it really what is. if I could help these guys to, to disciple some people? <laughs> yeah. You know, nothing to that at all. But it's like, okay, 
Well, how have you dealt with? And I don't really care yeah. the, the spectrum of age. It's like, how have you yeah. dealt with? And that's part of like trainings and stuff that I, I that I know I personally like to put together because it's like if we don't deal with that, you don't really know what you're projecting. Hmm. And it's like you can go through all the training, all the compassion, open help, love approach, all these different things, and you're you are still going to project onto clients or you know guys and stuff like that. So I'm really big into what am I have I actually mm-hmm. even dealt with my holes or deficiencies yeah. or all that kind of have stuff I been to therapy before yeah, or things like, like that and like dealt with all the oh my the baggage gosh. like it's like because i know my wife and i is like like really like going to therapy was a lifesaver in many ways it was mm. a marriage saver it was a lifesaver it was mm. a lot of things but i thank god for seeing it at that point. And it's yeah. almost like the scales are falling off your eyes. And it's like, oh my gosh, I've been this horrible for so long. And it's like, okay. All right. One, two, three. Okay. Pity party's over. Let's go. <laughs> all right. You figure this out. Right. How do we heal? Yeah. Right. So that part of it is super important. And I feel mm. like that's something that, again, that stretches across just the board of fatherhood, you know, manhood, all yeah. that kind of good stuff. So speaking that kind of language, Coming from the pregnancy center and the pro-life movement, that's that's the story that's walking into your pregnancy center. So, so what I hear you saying is you're working with dads or like you or you're speaking at fatherhood events, which I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's events yeah. just for we gotta link topic. you in. We gotta yeah, link you in, Josh. They need I'm to hear you. So man. out of that world. Dude. Okay, so there's yeah. fatherhood events. You speak at them and you're speaking on things like Self care, like like self awareness of yeah. of of and and why that's important and and just anything related to to getting on the track to becoming a better dad yeah. than what they are currently. Would that be yeah. like a fair summary? Yes. Then yes. And then my end result though is the lane I'm in. So mm. kind of understanding. So being able to tie all that stuff together, put it in a nice box with mm-hmm. a nice little bow, mm-hmm. and here's why I present. I get to present this. I get to present it in the pro life movement. That's kind of how I look at it. So it's like your take on like fatherhood and and, and how to help dads. Yes. And the lane that I've been given is this pro-life lane because sitting across from a guy in in the coaching room tells you a lot, Mm. (laughs) you know, in terms of his Mm, thought on abortion. So it's like, okay, so you got to be willing to unpack that stuff. Yeah. And sometimes that helps them think through the actual, what they're in a practice center for or the the thought of abortion. It helps them think through it hmm. in a more sensible, emotional, like all that stuff comes together, man. Yeah. And it's like, it's right there for us. Let's do it. <laughs> so you said something interesting to me before I turned the cameras on where, mm-hmm. about how at some of these events, like these aren't like pro-life events. These aren't right, mainly right, right, like right. the other exhibitors and speakers there aren't like you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Talk a little bit about, about that scene. Yeah. That, that can be fun. <laughs> That's the word I'm going to get. And by it. fun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you mean something. Yeah. Else. So it's interesting though, because I feel like it can be so inter- interesting because they find out I'm pro-life. <gasps> right. It's like, no, it's more so what are you doing here? <laughs> Mm. <laughs> you know, and it's that's the part that's like scary, huh? Because it's like, why would I not be here? Like, mm. that's exactly what we're fighting right. for. So I feel like I'm supposed to be here, right. you know. So it it's makes, confusing yeah. to them because just to like take all the spin off of it, I want yeah. everyone to catch what you're saying here. Yeah, I put you're. A lot of you're spin. I mean, I mean, it's not spin. It's just like no, it's just I, like. I, I, Here's what it is like. They they think pro life means just pro fetus. Yes. And you're like, no, I'm pro life. I care about moms and dads too. Yeah. So mm. of course I'm here. Yeah. It's not I, you're you're you're, yeah. you're like proof that not all pro life people have fetus tunnel vision. Exactly. Yeah, yes. That's I'm super cool. I'm the proof in front of you, and I'm willing to stick to this of my pro life stance. Yeah. But I'm here because I know what being pro life. I feel like what it means means this. Yeah. So and when you say that, does that do they pretty quickly like, okay, like we're cool and I'm glad you're here? Uh, or is there like a uh, Yeah, there's there's still hesitation. Yeah. Yeah, there this is not like this automatic like 
okay, we're buds. Like, no, nah, yeah. there's still a little bit of hesitation. And it yeah. still takes some time if I yeah. stay in contact with them because I try to. Yeah. I try to exchange information. And, you know, so if if they're doing something and I try to look it up or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it still can take time. Very, Do you get people who are like, after maybe your speech, they're like, okay, I wasn't into you before, but now I have, I like you. Yes. Some of that. That's like, pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's, been, that's been pretty awesome because that has happened a lot. And I, really I praise cool. God for that. So it's like they hear, and then they're like, literally, they're like, he oh, means it. Wow. Okay. He means that he's so like, how do we connect? Like, yeah. man, we got to connect, man. And these are like non-believers. That's, they're pro-choice. They're, that's so cool. So it's like, because they see it now. Yeah. And it's like, oh, and the biggest thing is, you're not one of them. Right. And it's like. Right. All oh, the time. Yeah. So that can be good and bad. Yeah, you know, I mean, it depends on who the them is. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah, yeah. if the them like something like we we've been clear. I, I don't think there's that many people that would be bothered by this. Like, we've kind of said like, be willing to throw the really bad pro lifers under the bus. Don't like, don't defend <laughs> every single crazy thing yeah. someone does just that. because they're like on your team. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I'm I'm not I'm just not one of those guys. Like, yeah. I'm gonna be try to re, be, be be respectful, um, and all that. But like, you know. There's some pretty weird friends elements of of any movement. True, and true. Uh, sometimes just being willing to be like, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> I don't do that. I, I do a different <laughs> thing." Like, can yeah. be enough for them to be like, "Okay, so the, the pro life movement is a more diverse place than I thought." Because right. like, I remember I was explaining this in um uh, in Ireland recently. I was I was trying to explain to them like that they have this pretty insane thing that happens in front of hospitals by this one anti-abortion person that's Ooh. it's not exactly like big graphic science but it's it, he has these big white coffins he brings basically oh, it's like it's like he's got uh, like a bunch of white coffins okay in front of that because 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 abortion happens in hospitals there. they don't really have abortion oh, clinics oh gotcha and so okay. he's you know he's well-meaning he's trying to be like did you know abortion happens here but i've read a bunch of the news articles and like no one's like they don't get it <laughs> he just seems very off-putting and, 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 mm. and, and weird to that society unfortunately oh, and so but I was explaining, like, like the problem is, even if you've got, like, uh, the more uh, maybe effective pro-lifers out there with them, the problem is pro-choice people or the general mm -hmm. public, they're not usually so nuanced as to understand, and I don't think this is even totally their fault, like, that the pro-life movement is such a diverse place. Yeah. Like, they, you know, they can see, I, I think Jacob basically, I think I'm basically just, 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 just saying something <laughs> Jacob said, some really smart Jacob said a while, a while ago. He's like, they can see a couple of good Sabbath counselors, some prayer warriors, I guess, like, so, you know, you got yeah. some Catholic people that are doing rosaries, and yeah. then you've got, like, this guy over here is, like, yelling with a bullhorn. You got this <laughs> people over here, they've got the graphic signs. This person over here has an anti-Catholic sign for some, some reason. reason. <laughs> we don't really know why. But there's, like, this whole different yeah. people and you and me look at them like there's like five or six different groups represented yeah. and that everyone else is like oh pro-lifers yeah they're all from the same thing like they don't they don't uh, like as uh, understand that True. that nuance yeah and so oh gosh yeah, yeah i mean Ugh. i think it's a real i mean it can be a really good moment when there's like hey i've never been around a pro-lifer like you yeah yeah that can be such and, and then i mean yeah, I mean, you could still say, "Oh, there's a lot more of me." There's, yeah. You have no idea. There's a really <laughs> lot of really cool people in the movement. Exactly, and I, I do that a lot. Yeah. My my number one thing is like, "Hey, we're I'm I'm, I'm not the only one." Like in terms of <laughs> right. what, and how they're you know framing yeah. it to me is like, man, I can yeah. point you to, to some things, you know, like yeah. go check out Eagle yeah. Rights Institute, you know, like I can do that, yeah. you know, and that's easier. So it's kind of like they just need that maybe that first. Yeah. touch you know or def whatever you yeah know? so that's 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 key man right. so you said something really interesting earlier that i was kind of i, I was <laughs> wanting to get to you said sometimes other pro-life people mm. hear that you go you do these events that are not really pro-life events they're right. they're fatherhood events yeah and you're hanging out with a bunch of people who are pro-choice yeah and they don't get super excited about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah talk so, to me about that i mean to each his own. <laughs> I don't know. <necessarily>. say. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, they're not very like, why would you do that? It's more like, what what do you it's almost like this feel of I'm defeating the purpose of the the, the message or whatever is being trying. I don't know. Because you're not at a pro life thing. Because right. Like I'm not at like a secular only pro life. Like that's all like it's all it's like you're always talking to friendlies. That's how I feel. Like, is that our only aim? You know, like, 
No. So no. it's like, there's a whole bunch of conferences and things to go to where we all, you know, right. we're, we all think the same, but at the same time, it's like, how do we gain anything, right. you know, in terms of kingdom type of thinking and, and purpose? If we're not engaging with people that don't think like us, right. you know what I'm saying? It's like, what well, what are we doing? Yeah. It's like, I, I don't know. I feel like it's just the way we're wired sometimes is, and, and I mean that, well, let me be more specific. Okay. Um, I can say like, you know, you and I, yeah. in terms of just the thought process of this, we can think like, why wouldn't I? Right. But then I, I literally had to like, kind of, you know, scale back. And when I was getting the, 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 the junk from like pro-lifers about this, I had to think though, like, why mm. are they really so adamant about this towards me? Mm. Like, well, what is so... And I think we we mentioned this off, you know, off camera, like they just enjoy the fight or, you know. There that, are some who just enjoy the fight. And it's sure. like, okay, you know, like I've been in a lot of fights. I don't necessarily enjoy just fighting. Like it's not cool to me. But at the same time, that's just like a, a, a joking thought. But at the same time, it's kind of like if I'm not engaging those who right. don't, you know, who don't see it this way, um, for for whatever reason, it's like man, like they're the ones that need the the gospel the most because that kind of right. feeds into a lot. No, so I, I get that. So I think the part that I don't understand, well, it's not just the part. There's probably <laughs> multiple things, but one thing <laughs> off the top of my head that I don't understand is like, so the people that I know who enjoy the fight, yeah. It seems like those people are the ones that are kind of used to getting outside the walls of the church because True. they're going to go yeah. fight, right? But yeah. so, like, what is what is going on for the people that are like, they're just like confused that you would go out and and yeah. be at these non pro life event? Like, like, are they afraid of what might happen if you go out? Like, like, or is it just like yeah. I don't understand yet? Why? Yeah. Like, it just seems so obvious that we should be at other <laughs> things. I don't. I, to me, yes, it's obvious that we should be at other things. Right. So help but, me understand them. I want to understand them. <laughs> so I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't know if we can. Oh, no. Like I, it's really, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really I hard. To you. Yes, you have. Because okay, I don't know. This out. I don't. I don't know what the makeup has to be in order to think like, why wouldn't I go? To these places, right? So we have that type of thinking that we can kind of line up with. Like it's okay. Like we're gonna. Right. Are have they these... afraid? Are they Maybe. afraid of like uh, you, us losing you, or I, that maybe you're not fully with us because you're hanging out with yeah. the outsiders? What's the? What's the? I'm trying to think of the scripture. Uh, well, you know, I'm not going to be help today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ne never mind. Let's let's, let's scrap that. Get no, on the app. <laughs> but I'm trying to think. It's more like what? maybe that makes sense though. Like maybe if you go over there and you hang out over there too long, you're gonna like pick up those. You might become more liberal, yeah, or something like, like that. That uh, would kind of make a little bit of sense. I, I, that's why. That's why I just thinking about that right now. It's yeah. Like, uh, well, yeah, I kind of get that. Yeah. So I feel like though, in that though, we can. That depends on how we're rooted, you know, like, like what we're going over there. And if I can be so easily changed or right. whatever, it's like, was I really rooted in what yeah. I was doing in the yeah. first place? How pro-life were you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like eh. that kind of speaks to more personal things to me. Yeah. So, hmm. I mean, if, if you see that and you're yeah. speaking into that as the pro-lifer who's like, Hey Gary, what are you doing? Cool. Yeah. Like, cause you, you, you love me. You're worried about me, but right. I don't know. Maybe that's, that maybe that's the best thing I can, yeah. yeah, that you thought of that I'm trying to. All right, final <laughs> yeah. question: What is the most surprising thing that you have learned working with men in this space? Ooh, oh man, let's see. I would say the most surprising thing would be how how much the women that are in the position. When talking to most of, when talking to some of the women, right? Just how much his thoughts and things to the decision actually mean to her. Hmm. That is like, until you just have a couple of those conversations of yeah. women who are, who were either abortion minded and ended up changing their mind, had the baby, or they're abortion minded and have the abortion. Yeah. And now are post abortive. And, 
specifically asking them, right? Like, man, like, what if? Yes, like, yeah. and I and I say I won't put the pregnancy center out of there, but I had a conversation two days ago with a client service director at a pregnancy center, uh-huh. and we were sitting down, and she said to me oh. that. She said, Gary, I literally had a client, a, a young lady, who said, this decision is based off of if my boyfriend wants this baby or not. Like, she just said, like, like, if I strict- choose abortion or not abortion, it everything has to do with how my boyfriend is going to respond or, or what, what he wants. Everything. Wow. And she, and she was saying this to me because she had already kind of fished around about, like, huh. we have family support. You know, right. like, where your parents... Yeah you know, throw you away or something or like, and all of that, she didn't even really care about the client. She was like, it depends on what my boyfriend thinks. Yeah. That happens way more than we know Mm. or think. So me, Mm. like personally, I didn't really know that until being in this work and actually asking that question. And it's like, how can we, it's more, now the question is how can we not speak to that? Yeah. You know, like that has to be it. So Mm. that would be my, yeah, my thing. That yeah. is like, it shakes me up. It's, I'm really, I'm really glad you talked about it. That surprises me a little bit, you know, yeah. because a lot of the, 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 the women that we talk to on campuses yeah. have a pretty hard exterior. Like a lot of it's kind of this very like strong feminist right. kind of vibe. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And, and maybe this is true even for them, it's, but mm-hmm. maybe some of that is kind of a facade and it's like, she really, she's aching for the boyfriend to be more supportive or, or, yes. or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's not the most obvious right. guess if you right. don't really know. I think yeah. that's, hey, so you don't always know what's going on. Yeah. Unless yeah. you ask a lot of questions. That's very interesting. Gary, I yeah. like, I just genuinely like you. Dude, you're, you're you awesome. You are just guy, one of my favorite people. Just, man, praise I'm, God, man. I'm, I'm glad I'm we're friends now. Most definitely, man. I'm glad we it. finally got to do this. I'm going to yes. have to have you back at some point. Hey, I'm with it. Let's, let's right. do it, man. Yeah, let's, 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 let's make All it happen, right. man. So again, yeah. if people want to get in touch with you, how do they get in touch with you? Um, Email would be okay. the easiest and quickest. Okay. Uh, G Freeman uh, at care-net.org or... Gary Freeman 07, Gary Freeman 07, all one thing at gmail.com. Either awesome. one of those two. Um, yeah. You're on those. I'm, I'm on those. We can respond and make some things happen. Hopefully. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks Amen. so much for being here. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you for listening to the Equipped for Life podcast, a project of Equal Rights Institute. Equal Rights Institute uses speaking, writing, YouTube videos, podcasts, online courses, and campus outreach to help pro-life advocates in the areas of practical dialogue tips, relational apologetics, pro-life philosophy, and sidewalk counseling. If you've been helped by this podcast, please consider supporting it by making a donation at EqualRightsInstitute.com. 